All right, so today we're going to be doing a little bit of um, stone or um, background uh, cobblestone kind of thing. <clears throat> kind of a path to be used for a road or anything else. I'll start with the bright brush right here. A little bright brush action. I'll have to come out like this. Kind of organic, not like totally straight. And so the colors you're going to be using, you want to change color quite a bit, so you don't want to have like the same color. Overall, it's going to be more or less that color, but I have like raw umber right here. Mix that in there. Be a little bit of black to gray it out. And I'll start too dark on purpose. And then I'll lighten it up. So like right here. I believe your reference is it's kind of a hard edge, straight line. Uh, same techniques as what I'm showing you here, though. The techniques will be the same. And when you're doing this, um, your first coat, you want to make sure that your first coat even is like following the uh, perspective. So it's like you need to go, your brush strokes, you need to be going like side to side or to the vanishing point, wherever that is. So it's like you have two choices. I'll get it light here for more contrast. Base coat, you know, it's like how small my strokes are going. And then I'll uh, change color quite a bit. So now I'll get a little bit more brown down here. Brown sounds good. Small little brush. So I might start off with like big brush strokes. I'll show you that. So I'll go like this first. Watch this. Big brush strokes, but then you gotta hide them though. So you don't wanna leave it with big brush strokes. That would look terrible. <laughs> Looks like you don't really care. So uh, to get rid of this. One big brush stroke. I'm going to come in here with the smaller uh, brush strokes and like tap them in there. You're doing rows. You want to make sure that overall they get uh, either darker or lighter and changing color. I'll have it a little bit darker as it comes down here away from the light. Almost a pure black on a dirty brush. Now I'll come back in and do a little burnt sienna. Those colors in there. And so, so far, it's all like kind of big brush, big brush strokes. Now, instead of going straight up all the way up, I'll skip up here. A little patch of brown over there, another little patch over here. So, it's uh, there's small little uh, changes of color. So, the big thing is changing color quite a bit and small brush strokes. Basically, for almost anything, is uh, value or brush strokes first. Color changes later. All right. Overall, I'm starting to get this like nice base going in the back over there. And we don't know what it's made out of yet. We've established that yet. But we'll here in a second. And Madison, this is also good for you because I'm going to be going over cobblestones again. Um, so right here, nice base, darker overall. And here in the bottom, it gets lighter as it comes up. And I could leave it like that, but I'm gonna do a couple more layers just for the heck of it. So it's like, it could be done, but for A, I'm saying, I wanna make sure that I have like a lot of variety of color. But there's nothing wrong with the color that I'm putting this on, but I just wanna change it up a little bit more. But like blurry little patches. All right, so now I get, I'll make a little bit lighter near the end, so I'll do a tint of that color, a little bit of white and burnt sienna. Get that in there right here on the side. And that color on its own is a little bit different. Um, so what I'll do is I'll add a color that's very different like this. Then to make it make sense, just there, I'll come in here and I'll do another one on this side. And the shapes of these things are gonna be kind of like varied so it's going to be like more like this down here more sideways the further away you go so just on yours it goes further back in the distance i want to make sure that your stones are going to be uh, really small and uh, very narrow as well all right you can start to see the stones kind of happening a little bit i'll start making them a little more defined here in a second it's all with a big uh big brush stroke uh, so I've got really big ones here, different shapes, so they're not all just round. Uh, so it's a lot of layers. You can almost uh, just on yours, you can almost leave it kind of like that. You can almost be done. <clears throat> I'll show you how to uh, pimp them out. 
what I mean by that is like getting some good details. Like some individual rocks. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'll come in here with the tint, so I'll go uh, a little lighter, but I don't wanna isolate all of them. So I'll come in here, spend a little more time on this guy. And have it come out a little bit more maybe. And horizontal brush strokes when I'm doing this. I'll go in there, even a, a really bright one here maybe. And so the hang of them, kind of like that. I'll fill this up a little bit. This is one, and I'll do another size here. Small brush strokes, all horizontal. So if you see it, even as they turn, uh, the longest edges are always going to be flat like this. And that's going to be, you know, be more horizontal as it comes down here. Back here, these will be kind of blending in. You won't really see the differences. So on your little pathway road thing, you won't even see the individual stones about halfway down. All right, so you can see how I'm like kind of gradually going in there. You're starting to see it. So it's going like from loose to tight. I'm not doing each stone. They're starting to develop slowly. And here, do the same thing. Now I could change color a little bit more. Maybe this one could be a little more burnt sienna. So it looks like they're made out of different materials, different types of stones. And you can see how, because of the shape, it looks like they're laying down. It doesn't look like they're standing up on a wall or anything. And I'm just kind of scrubbing. So this is all, watch this. So I'm doing a scrubbing. So watch this. Scrub, kind of in a circular oval. I have small ones in here, like that tiny guy. I'll do a bigger one here, different kind of shapes. You don't want to look like they're too rounded. You want them to look like they're flat. So to do that, um, I'm going to get in there and make sure that they're not shaded in too round. All right, here's another one. This is gonna be kind of flat here as well. It's got some yellow in it. I'll do a small one on the side. Another big one over here. I'll let this one go all the way off the page. What? Off the canvas. That was crazy. So right here is my good area. So good area is gonna be here. Back here is just gonna be kind of a blurry hot mess. You only need a few good stones to make the whole thing look good. Otherwise, uh, so if you have like two good stones, people think the whole thing looks good. When in fact, most of it looks kind of crappy. Another one here, change of color. So we started off, nice base. Now we're starting to get in there and get some highlights. Got a little bit of a highlight here over the whole thing. So the highlights on the stones, you don't want to put them right on the corners, otherwise it'll look like it's a round boulder. To make it look flat, you kind of want to go straight across with your brush strokes. I mean, small brush strokes, but still straight across. And down here, another little highlight on this side. I'll do some small ones. I'll leave this unfinished over here so you can see different faces. Base coat to finish. All right, so that's it for now. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse that off. Now I'll come with a round brush, small round brush. Mix up a shadow color, more or less like black, burnt umber, maybe a little raw umber even. And so right here, this little area right in here, if I come away from the light source, that gives a little hint where that color is. You can kind of establish like how wide these are, how thick they are, I mean, by doing that. So it looks like they're sticking up a little bit. I'll even have some plants growing in there, just because I can. All right, so now look, these are getting more defined. I'm gonna leave these almost like that. Maybe I'll define one a little bit further away so it's not all so cut and dry. Like right here, I can outline this one. One more over there, then here I can outline that just a little, but not all that, just like parts of it. And right here, another little one. Boop, boop. Now I'm starting to get the little definition in there. 
<laughs> Matt, are you watching us? Madison? All right, so come, come down here. A little more of a shadow. And now what I'm gonna do is add some texture to the foreground one. So the foreground one, so I'm gonna come in there, use the side of the brush to create the illusion of texture. I'll mix up like yellow ochre and white, the side of the brush. my finger, kind of tap it out a little bit. And I'll change colors too, so this is like a yellow highlight. And I could do a burnt sienna highlight, or burnt sienna white. I'll get that cracker lacking. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Finger tap. Swing way over here to this one, and skip around when you have a different highlight color. And these are kind of boring over here, so I'll get a little more highlights that's up close. My paint's pretty wet. When you do this, you want kind of wet paint. And then just using the side of the brush, not painting the whole thing, and tap it in there with your finger. Nothing over here. More detailed. Save the, the most detail for these uh, two in the front. When people look at it, they'll think the whole thing looks good because of those two guys. It's like oh, cobblestone's like painting leaves. With leaves, you don't paint every leaf on a tree. You still like a few good ones. People think the whole tree looks amazing and all the leaves. When in fact, most of your leaves look terrible. A lot of texture on that one. All right, so now that I have those, a little highlight texture on these things, now I'll come in with another the darker glaze, and I'll add some crack rock. Crack rock's kind of nice to be able to uh, add those little highlights and shadows to it. Mm, technically, you could quit now. This, this would be an A quality. If you want it even better, though, I'll come in here and make a little pit, a little shadow kind of thing. A little nick over here, a little hole over there. So these are glazes so far. We'll do a big patch on this one. All right, now that we have these little nuggets, uh, I'll come in, I'll do a really dark shadow right on the top of them. So right underneath where the light source is coming from, I'll outline it really dark right on top. Dark there, dark up here. The glaze represents most of it. There, dark line there, dark. All right, now I'll finish it up with some highlights. I'll do a tint of the color, so I'll do white and burnt sienna. And highlight on the bottom. Boop. I think in here, and not over the whole thing, look like a line. Indicate some, but not the whole thing. I'll put some highlights on the top of the rocks. Stone, I should say stones, but. Yeah, not over all of them either. Uh, and I would probably come in and I'll add some plants. You don't need many of those, so watch this. Yellow and black. Dark little weeds I could have growing out. Melt the kittens with a skinny blade. Eve's growing inside of the same. Oh, look at that cute little weed. Adorable. Grass, a little chunk over here, a little tiny weed. This also helps out with contrast as well. It's like one-stop shopping. Get detail, it's like it took some time to do. Contrast, little weeds in there, those are looking good. And over here as well. And I could uh, add little flowers to it. Let's get more contrast. Oh, look at that. It's cute. That's an adorable little weed right there. All right, so um, that's pretty much making it to the
once again, you start off loose, get tighter and tighter, and finally you add details. Don't add details to the whole thing, though. 